Whether you're cashing in your bonus or just want to invest better, putting that first thousand dollars to work can be really intimidating. In this video, I'll share a complete plan for how to invest a thousand dollars in stocks. I'll show you three strategies and the themes every investor needs to know. I'll highlight a few stock picks in each strategy and then reveal exactly how I would invest a thousand dollars. We're talking your first portfolio today on Let's Talk Money. Beat that. Make money. Make your money work. Creating for you. the financial future you deserve. Let's talk money. Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now, Nation, you can start investing with any amount of money. Most sites are going to let you open that investing account with no minimum and you'll get a free bonus stock on sites like Webull when you start with as little as $100 in your account. But we did our 2020 investing plan in January, showing you how to grow a $1,000 portfolio in one year and the response was overwhelming. I got emails and comments asking how to invest that $1,000, the strategies and the stocks that I would pick. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. I'll start by showing you how to pick an investing strategy and some of the themes that I'm following that, that could mean double digit returns for decades. I'll share some of the stock ideas and then reveal how I would invest $1,000 in my own portfolio. I'll be using the Webull app to show you how to invest. Uh, this is a new app that I've been using since last year and I love the features here. You can see all the upcoming IPOs to get in on those new stocks being issued. Uh, the earnings center here shows you when those quarterly numbers are expected from each company as well as what the street expects the company to say. Besides stocks in multiple markets, you can trade crypto like Bitcoin and get all your market news. But my favorite feature here is the stock simulator. The app gives you a million dollars for paper trading to test out your strategies and the stocks before you put any real money down. Now Webull gives you a free share of stock when you open an account with at least $100. So I'll leave a link in the video description below to check that out. Before you can invest though, you need to know what kind of stocks you want to buy. There's lots of strategies out there you can use, but three that every investor needs to know are going to be growth, value and dividends. Now, I'll detail each of these, including what to look for and the stock example on each, but they're all pretty basic. Now, growth investing is just looking for the companies that are growing their sales and their earnings faster than their peers. So here are things stocks like Tesla and Netflix. On the other hand, value investing is a focus on paying less for the shares, usually on a price to earnings basis. Here are things shares maybe of general dynamics, ticker GD and GM. And dividend investing then is going to be focusing on that cash flow, but you can also be looking for strong growth and value with this one. Now I'm going to show you how to find stocks in each of these strategies in a bit, some of the criteria that I use and then a stock example in each. First though, I want to talk about investing themes that you can follow along with these strategies. So a theme is just going to follow an external factor like growth of 5G or the revolution in artificial intelligence. These are universal forces that are going to develop over a decade or more and really drive growth for some specific stock sectors. So besides looking for just those growth stocks or the value stocks like I'll show you next, you also want to be thinking about which sectors are going to most benefit from these themes. So for example, that how 5G is going to benefit gaming or, or how AI will benefit transportation industry. Because if you can find these unstoppable forces and ride that wave in these themes, then picking the best stock within a sector or two that's going to benefit, that's where you're going to have that potential to find that next Amazon or the next Tesla. And Nation, I'm always looking for new themes to follow. So scroll down and share your best ideas with your bowtie brothers and sisters in the comments. What are those big themes or those strategies that you're following right now? Now onto each of these three strategies though and some of the criteria that I use to find stocks in each. So growth stocks are again just those companies with faster sales and earnings growth. Often the stock price is rising much faster than the market and the shares are relatively more expensive. Now that's a problem for a lot of investors, those higher price to earnings ratios. The example I like to use for value versus growth is this Netflix which trades at a price of over a hundred times the earnings it makes versus Disney which trades for just 25 times its profits. But a look at the stock chart for Netflix and Disney and it becomes painfully clear to the value investor that growth stocks need to be a part of your portfolio. Even though Netflix constantly trades at those ridiculous PE ratios, it's managed to keep up that faster growth and the shares have surged almost six fold over the last five years. Now finding growth stocks, you want to look for more than just the stock price or the sales growth. Of course, sales and earnings growth are really the definition here. So I'll be looking for companies that grow in sales at, at one and a half to two times their sector average. But you also want to be making sure that they're not growing at the expense of profitability. You see, a lot of growth companies are just going to add scale wildly. Uh, they'll add staff and spend marketing dollars without really paying attention to the return on investment. 
sure, they they got the growth, but it doesn't help investors much because that profitability isn't there and the earnings just don't budge. So what I'll do, I'll look at the operating margin to see that it's above peers or at least improving over the last couple of years. This is the operating income. So that amount, the sales left over after paying for uh, operating expenses, then divided by sales. And it's really the best measurement for, uh, for management effectiveness. Finally, for growth stocks, I'll also want to pay attention to the debt to equity ratio. And just like that profitability, a lot of these growth companies are going to be borrowing billions of dollars for those growth through acquisitions. Problem is that when the growth doesn't pan out and that debt comes due, the shares crater. So I, I want to make sure that a company isn't taking on too much leverage. Now for our growth pick, and everyone in the nation is going to recognize this one, I want to highlight Luck & Coffee, ticker LK. This is a retail store based in China, really the Starbucks of China. And I think you're going to be hearing a lot about this one in the coming decade. It's up over 30% over the last few months, and that's even against that coronavirus outbreak in China. The retailer increased its store footprint 24% in the most recent quarter alone and has increased sales nearly 600% over the last year. On top of this growth, though, it's also managed to improve store level profitability by 12.5%, so huge growth and getting more profitable. LK is moving into its own tea brand and vending machines, and it's expected to be larger than Starbucks in China this year. Now, I'm actually more negative on the coronavirus than most and think it could hit China harder than we've already seen, but I'm taking advantage of any sell-offs to add more to my position in Luck & Coffee. Kind of the opposite of growth investing here is finding value stocks, which are companies with shares trading inexpensively on that P-E ratio or just below some kind of intrinsic fair value. Now, investing in value stocks just makes intuitive sense, and I'd say I've spent more time here than with growth stocks. We all love a good deal, and it's great when you can pick up some of these stocks and just watch them rebound higher. This is how we were able to beat the market with our 2019 challenge portfolio, investing in value names like Haynes Brands for a triple digit return, and then General Mills for almost an 80% return. Finding good value stocks, we're gonna be looking for stocks that can meet three criteria. And first is for a valuation metric, like the price to earnings or price to sales that's lower than their competitors. We also want to find stocks with the sales that are increasing over the last couple of years and a lower debt to equity ratio than their peers. With just these criteria, you're not only finding stocks that trade more cheaply than others, but they have a solid business trajectory. You know, a lot of value stocks are actually cheap for a reason, like, like sales or earnings are on a downward slide. But by screening for those companies with improving sales and that lower debt to equity ratio, which means that they're going to have more financial flexibility than their peers, then you're gonna find those value stocks with that real rebound potential. And my value stock pick is a controversial one and probably the riskiest one we'll talk about today. $33 billion Kraft Heinz trades at just 9.9 .9 times earnings on that PE ratio. Now KHC has been hurting ever since going public again in 2015 and just saw its shares rocked by fourth quarter earnings. The company was able to beat expectations for earnings but missed on sales because of that lower sales volume. And pricing was up 3% in the quarter though, and the fact that they were able to beat on profitability tells me management is doing something right. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway still owns a huge chunk of this company, and you better believe he's pushing for that profit. Now, a lot of you out there are going to look at that almost 6% dividend yield on Kraft and get really excited, but I do want to warn you here. There is a very good chance that this gets cut this year to preserve cash flow and pay down the debt. Uh, if that happens, it could be a short-term drop in the shares, but I think this means an earlier rebound for the stock price. Our last strategy before we get to how I'd invest that $1,000 in stocks is my favorite here, dividend investing. Now, you can actually combine dividends and value stocks, so looking for a good value plays that pay a dividend. Growth stocks don't generally provide the cash payout though because the company is growing so fast that it's reinvesting all its earnings instead. For dividend investing, it's important to look at more than just that high yield or the dividend payment. And with a lot of these super high yield dividend stocks, you might see that stock price plunge or there's a very real possibility that the dividend could be cut. So for dividend stocks, we're looking for a payout ratio that's below peers in the same sector or the industry. Now the payout ratio is just the annual dividend amount divided by the earnings per share. This shows you how much of profits the company is paying out as the dividend and how much is keeping back for that business growth. So finding a company with a good dividend but also a lower payout ratio than its competitors is a great sign. Now, this means that the company has room to increase its dividend and that it has the potential to outgrow its peers, which usually means greater market share and a rising dividend. Besides that payout ratio, I'm also looking for stocks that pay at least a 3% yield. Any lower than that, and it's just not much of a dividend stock. I'm also going to be looking for stocks that have increased their dividend payment for years, so at least 5 to 10 consecutive years. Now, this is an important one, and some great research out of the Ned Davis firm has actually shown that companies that have consistently increased their dividend payments have beaten the markets for decades. 
Now I might only screen for companies that have been able to increase their payments for maybe three to five years to really catch those rebound potentials. But there are groups of stocks that increase their dividends every single year for 20 years and more. My dividend pick here is another controversial one, $260 billion Exxon Mobil, ticker XOM. Now, Energy did not have a great year in 2019 and has gotten absolutely crushed this year on lower demand because of the coronavirus, but oil demand will rebound within a couple of quarters, and I think this is a great opportunity to pick up shares here for that 5.8% dividend yield. What I really like about Exxon though, is besides the dividend yield, is that rather than pull back on the investment spending like a lot of the other companies in the sector, Exxon is taking advantage of lower prices to invest in more projects. I think it's gonna be a great deal and it's gonna show through in cash flow over the next several years. Now, while these strategies might differ, so obviously growth investing and value are looking at completely different factors, this doesn't mean you have to stick with just one strategy. It's good to have a little of all three in your portfolio, so picking a few stocks from each group to get that cash flow, the growth, and the value potential. Now I wanna put all this together to show you an example portfolio of how you might invest $1,000 in stocks. And everyone here in the nation knows I'm all about the dividends, so that's where we're gonna focus, but I'll also look at some of those big themes like 5G and artificial intelligence for that growth. First, I'd start off with a core of three funds, and this is something we do with every portfolio. We invest between 60 to 70% in a few broad exchange traded funds or ETFs. These are gonna give us instant diversification across asset classes like stocks, bonds, and real estate. Now what this means is through just these few funds, we'll have hundreds of stocks and bonds, so our risk is really spread out and we're gonna get those market returns on the group. So if we're investing 65%, then that's $650 of our 1,000. And I'm gonna go with three funds here. First is the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, ticker VYM, for a 3.1% dividend and some solid price appreciation. Now the VYM holds shares of 400 stocks and is really well diversified across sectors, even the tech sector which usually isn't well represented in a dividend fund. The fund holds some of the largest dividend companies and has produced a 13% annual return over the last decade. Now the VYM doesn't hold any real estate stocks and I want exposure to that asset class, so I'm gonna buy the Vanguard Real Estate ETF here, ticker VNQ. Now the VNQ holds shares of 185 companies that invest in real estate property and the fund itself is diversified across every property type. It pays a 3.3% dividend yield and has produced a 12% annual return over the last 10 years. Finally, here to round out these three funds, I'll be adding the Vanguard Long-Term Bond Fund, ticker BLV, for that exposure to fixed income classes. The fund holds over 2,300 bonds, and they're all in these U.S. Treasury and investment-grade bonds, so this is a super safe fund that pays a 3.2% dividend yield and has produced a 7.5% annual return over the last 10 years. Beyond that $650 in our three ETFs, and I'd probably break this down into $300 in that stock fund, 150 in the bond fund, and then 200 in the real estate fund. Beyond this, I'd put that remaining $350 of our thousand to invest in no more than 10 to 15 individual stocks. So if you put these together, I've got the $300 in the stock fund, the 360 in individual stocks for a total of $650 or 65% of our thousand dollar portfolio. I've got $150 or 15% in bonds and $200 or 20% in real estate. And for the individual stocks, I'd probably go with 10 stocks. Uh, the three above in our growth value and dividend examples, then I'd pick the rest from our sector series of videos. In that series, we covered each of the 11 sectors of the economy and picked my five top stocks from each. Even against the coronavirus and plunging oil prices, we've got some huge returns in this portfolio with four stocks over 20% higher in just three months. With $350 spread across 10 stocks, that's 3.5% in each, so that gives me room to add to each of these positions if I want, but not have to worry about bumping into my 5% limit for any single company. Click on the video to the right for that 2020 investing plan. That's a 12-month investing plan revealing how much to invest each month to build a $1,000 portfolio. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.